Okay, imagine you're playing a video game and you're the last one left. Your heart's pumping, your brain is firing on all cylinders. You're completely in the zone. In fact, you're so in the zone you aren't even thinking. Your mind is empty, acting without thought. Your hands take over and you somehow know exactly what you need to do to land your shots, and you aren't even aware of how you're doing it. You aren't planning anything, it's just happening. You've somehow tapped into some primordial mind state, free from doubts, distractions, and uncertainty. You were possessed by some magical energy that guided you to victory. This feeling of not having to think, of being guided by some mysterious energy, is called the Tao. Okay, that that sounds cool and all, but like, what exactly is the Tao? Like, can you can you define it better? Page one of the Tao Te Ching. The Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. Okay, what does page two say? You've only read page one, haven't you? No, no, no. I've, I've read it all. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, so so Tao translates to way, or sometimes path, method, or style. The Tao is the way, the underlying thing of it or principle of existence. Now, why am I being so vague about defining the Tao? Well, because Taoists believe the Tao is beyond language. So the Tao is basically heaven? No, it's beyond that. So it's outer space? No. The universe? No. The multiverse? No. The, the omniverse. omniverse. Look. The Tao can only be understood through direct experience, not through words, okay? Well then why did they write books with lots of words in them? Alright, think of it like this. The words we use to describe things in this world aren't the thing itself. The words are just an abstraction or an approximation of the thing we're describing. You know, you can't capture all of reality in words. You can only capture little pieces of reality that humans are capable of understanding. So when Lao Tzu wrote, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao, he meant like, you can't just write down a bunch of words and then think, yep, that's it, I understand all of it now, because that, that's not how understanding something works. Anyway, moving on. Taoism emphasizes simplicity, spontaneous action, and intuition. But to be able to understand where Taoist thinkers were coming from, you have to learn about the historical context in which it originated. So here's a quick summary. Before around 200 BC, China was never really one unified country, having been made up of many different states. From 500 BC to 200 BC was known as the Warring States Period, an era of chaos and war where over 400 battles were fought by the different states over political control. During this time, many different philosophies were developed as a way to cope with the outcomes of war and adopted by different states to guide different methods of government, namely Confucianism and legalism. Both were about the strict adherence to principles of order, social hierarchy, and social rituals, a system of rules for how you're supposed to act within society, where what you should be doing is dictated by your place in the social hierarchy and who you're interacting with. Taoism gained popularity among many common people as a rejection of the rigidity and hierarchical nature of the other philosophies, associating them with the corrupt ruling class. Eventually, the Qin Dynasty prevailed conquering the other states, resulting in a unified China for the first time. As for the different philosophies, no one idea was universally accepted. Over time, they all blended together, borrowing different ideas from each other. Alright, well, what's all this stuff about, like, spontaneous action and getting out of your own way? Okay, so in Taoism, there's this thing called Wu Wei, which means doing without doing, not trying, or non-forcing. It's a state of effortless action, where you're doing things without needing to think about what you're doing. You're doing without effort, a mind state of strong yet effortless attention, where you're very concentrated, but it doesn't feel like you're trying to concentrate. Think of something like being funny. Have you ever met someone, or maybe been this person yourself, who is clearly trying too hard to be funny? They try to force humor into situations where humor doesn't belong, or when it's not the right time for humor. They come off as contrived and the opposite of funny. When you try to be funny, you aren't funny. But oftentimes when you let go of this desire to be funny, you are funny. 
Think of those moments when you're with your friends, completely relaxed, and you guys are just cracking jokes. You're not trying to be funny, but you're just laughing at like everything that comes out of your mouth. That's when you're at your funniest. Or think of something like sleep. Have you ever known you have to be up early the next day, so you try extra hard to relax and fall asleep, but you end up staying up longer than you normally would have? The act of trying to fall asleep has a complete opposite effect of what you want to accomplish. Or in a more general sense, have you ever been trying so hard at something that you end up sort of stumbling over your own thoughts and intentions? Oftentimes it's when you let go of all your preconceived notions, all these ideas about how things have to be done that you end up performing your best. So Wu Wei is a state of being when your perception of the self that feeling of being me and the thing you are doing morph together. You become one with the action, absorbed into it. It's very similar to the state of flow from psychology, but more on that later. Now you might be thinking, how do I achieve this mind state? This leads to a genuine paradox. If you need to relax or not try to do something, you can't do that by trying not to do it. So how do you try not to try? Well, first off, I'd like to point out how oftentimes goals are achieved indirectly. If you're trying to fall asleep, you don't just try to relax, you count sheep, and then the act of counting sheep indirectly relaxes you. If you're performing an athletic feat and you're trying to focus on whatever skill you're performing, you don't just try harder, you focus on your breath and that narrows your attention, which strengthens your focus. So people have been figuring out how to try not to try for a long time. And the Confucians and Taoists have gone back and forth with each other on what is the best way to achieve Wu Wei. Starting with Confucius who thought, try really hard all the time. Eventually what you're trying will become second nature and then you won't have to try anymore. Lao Tzu, a Taoist on the other hand, thought, don't try at all. When you try too hard, you come off as contrived and disingenuous. And then Mencius, another Confucian, came along and tried to carve a middle way between the two. He thought, try, but not too hard. There is a time and place for effort. There is a time and place for spontaneity. Zhuangzi, another Taoist, thought, don't try, don't not try. Just completely empty your mind of ideas of trying or not trying altogether. Don't even think about it. Okay, you keep saying try so much that I don't even really know what you mean by that anymore. Like, what exactly does it mean to try? Well, trying will mean different things in different contexts, but the simplest way to think of trying is of exerting effort. I'm gonna flash a word on the screen and I want you to say the color of the word. Not the word itself, but just the color that it is. And do it as fast as you can. Cool. Now say the color of this word. So you probably had to pause for a second and catch yourself from reading the word instead of saying the color of it. That brief moment where you had to exert effort and control your behavior is basically what trying is. I'd also like to point out that most of these ideas came about during a time of war. When Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi wrote about not trying or non-forcing, it was in the context of gaining political power, not in the context of learning how to draw or how to backflip on a skateboard. So the more nuanced question is, when should you try versus when should you not try? And how do you know when to do what? I'd like to talk a little bit about the concept of flow in psychology. A flow state is basically when you're in the zone, like when you're playing a sport or a video game and you lose track of time and the next thing you know, hours went by. It's an enjoyable experience. You're very concentrated at the time and you aren't really concerned about the past or what you're gonna be doing later. You're just kind of hypnotized by whatever it is you're doing in the present moment. The psychologists who study flow say there are a few prerequisites to entering this state. You have to eliminate all distractions that can pull you out of the flow state. You have to have a very clear goal about the task and the outcome you're trying to achieve. And the thing you're doing has to be challenging enough that it's not boring, but not too challenging that you become discouraged. And when these conditions are met, you won't feel any resistance in your work. Knowing this, you can start to see the similarity between flow states and Wu Wei. Alright, well I tried my best to explain that in a way that was easy to understand and not too esoteric but don't try too hard to understand it. 